Hi, this is Hong Shu from MotionCircles.com. Today I'll be teaching you how to achieve this animation in After Effects. I've attached the working file in the description. Feel free to download it and follow along. Without further ado, let's jump right in. So let's get started on the animation. First of all, we need some shapes. I already created those shapes in Illustrator. If you have the plugin Overlord, you can just push these Illustrator shapes into After Effects. If you don't have Overlord, we already put the shapes inside this shape composition here. And this is the shape that we need to use to animate those Mandela effects. First of all, let's grab this first shape. Command C, copy the shape. Let's go to main composition, paste it in. And I need to put this shape right in the center of the composition. Let's go to a line and then put in the center. Now I need to zoom in. I need to use the pen behind to, to move the anchor point all the way down to the bottom edge of the shape and then move the shape up to make sure my anchor point is right at the center of the composition. Now I can put in some keyframes. First of all, let's go into the scale property, hit S on the scale. Let's hit the stopwatch to add a keyframe and then go forward 50 frames. Command shift right arrow, one, two, three, four, five. And then hit the stopwatch again. Let's animate this one from zero to 100. And this is gonna be the growing of my first animation, first shape here. And in order for us to animate the Mandela effect, we need the shape to be morphing into different shapes. And to do that, we need to manipulate the path property of the shape. Let's hit this layer and then in the search bar, let's search for the pass. Now we have the pass property. Let's hit the stopwatch to add a keyframe on the pass property. I want at zero second, this shape is gonna be staying like this. Now this is gonna be the first shape that we need for the animation. Next, we can go back to the shapes composition, grab the second one, search the path property of the second shape, and then hit the stopwatch, add a keyframe. Now we can copy this keyframe because this keyframe is gonna have the shape information of this shape. We can copy this keyframe, command C, and then go back to the main composition. Go forward 50 frames again, command shift, right arrow, one, two, three, four, five. Once we select the path property, we can paste in the shape keyframe that we copied from the other shape, command V. After we have this keyframe in, you can see the morph between these two shapes. Basically, we're just gonna keep copying the different shapes in order to animate the morph effect between these shapes. Let's go to the third shape here, search the path, and then make sure we add a keyframe on the path property, copy this keyframe, command C, go back and then 50 frames forward, copy this path information, command V, and this is the effect we get. The last one is gonna be this one here, search the path, and then add a keyframe, copy the keyframe, command C, go back, go forward 50 frames again, paste in the shape information, command V. Now, if I play the animation, there is an animation between these different shapes within this one layer. And since it's moving really slowly, we need to add some energy. Select all the keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And now we just need to go to the graph editor, make sure we're in the speed graph. And then we drag the curve like this to give some influence to the keyframe so that the keyframe is moving faster. Almost like 90% of influence that we have. After we adjust the speed graph, let's, let's see what the animation looks like. Let's see what the animation looks like now. That's nice. And this is gonna be our shape animation. Let's pre-compose it, Command Shift C. Call this one Shapes Animation. Now we have one layer that's already have a animation and in order to create the Mandela effect, we need to duplicate this layer and then rotate it around based on the anchor point in the center so that we got more copies of the same animation to create the Mandela effect. In order to duplicate this layer, let's go to the rotation property, hit R on the keyboard, and then 
hold down Option on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch. We need to add in an expression. It's going to be index times 30. So index means whatever your layer number is, that's going to be the index. For example, for this layer, index is going to be 1 since it's the first layer. And then 1 times 30 is going to be 30 degrees so that this layer is going to be rotated 30 degrees. This layer is rotated 30 degrees. And now I can duplicate this layer, Command D. Since we have a second layer, an index became 2, and now 2 times 30 is going to be 60. Now the second layer is rotated 60 degrees. Now we just keep duplicating the layers, Command D. It's going to give us this flower shape with 12 layers. And now we have 12 copies of the same animation. Each one is 30 degrees apart. If I play the animation, let's see what it looks like. Now we have created a very basic Mandela animation. This is basically the easiest way to create a Mandela animation. However, this is not where we want to stop. We need to add more layers to this animation to make it more polished. Let's go inside the shape animation. The good thing about this animation is that once you create the shape animation within this one layer, it's going to be reflected outside from the outside composition so that we have a duplication of the same animation that goes in a circle. Now we just need to manipulate this animation here and then add more layers to make the animation more polished and more complete. First of all, let's hit U on the keyboard. I only did the scale property of this animation. I can also animate the position property. Let's hit Shift P for position. Let's hit the stopwatch on the position property. And then once we get to this frame, we like this position, that's good. And then once we get this frame, we can move this layer up all the way over there. And then when it goes to this frame, we can move this shape down. And the last one, we can even make the scale change on the last animation, last shape to make it bigger, something like this. And then after maybe 50 frames, one, two, three, four, five, I want them to disappear. So the scale is gonna ch change to zero. So I need to copy the influence of these keyframes. Remember we did the speed graph that we have all these different curves to add speed to the animation. I can achieve the same thing by selecting all these layers and right click, go to keyframe velocity. Let's change the velocity to 90% of influence. So that's gonna give me the similar animation to the first one we adjusted from the curves editor. We added position change. If we go back to the main composition, let's see if the animation changes. That looks pretty cool. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Now we are finished with this one layer. We just need to add a couple more layers of animation. Let's do the second layer. Let's go back to the shapes and then let's copy this one here. This is one single shape. Let's go to the path property. You know what? Since it's only the first layer, we can copy this shape layer, Command C. And let's go back to the main composition, go to this shape animation layer. I want to copy this layer and then I want to move it to the center. Make sure I have the anchor point at the bottom of the shape and then I can make it smaller here. For this one, basically I want it to go with this shape over here. When we have this shape, I want to introduce the first one here and then Let's use the scale property, move this one up, make it bigger, something like this. So it goes from 0% to this big. And then when everything comes down, I'll delete this layer. So basically this layer, new layer, new shape is only lasting for this long within the composition. If I select all the keyframe, right click keyframe velocity, 90% of influence. So when my circle is going up, I'll introduce this new shape here to add an extra layer. And then when they come down, this layer disappears. So that's how it's going to work. Let's go back to the main composition and see what the animation looks like. 
Now we have a middle layer that's animating so that the inside is not that empty. That looks pretty cool. Let's go save the project, command S. So the next thing we can do is to add more layers to this composition or even more shapes. If I go to the original demo I had, let's go inside and see how many shapes I have. I only have four layers with different shape animations. However, they're essentially the same idea. Now I can copy this layer one, command C, and then let's go to shape animation, command V. Let's see what this layer looks like. Okay, this is what this layer looks like. It's changing between different shapes. I also added a gradient stroke on this layer as well as a gradient fill color. And if I turn off the solo button, let's go back to our animation and take a look what the whole thing looks like now. Okay, that's pretty good. And then for the last layer that we need to add, we can go back to the demo and add the last one, command C, go back to the animation, go back to the shape animation, add in this last layer, check the solo button, let's see what the last layer looks like. So for this one, basically what we did is we have a rotation property and we have the anchor point right in the center of the composition. However, this layer is keep rotating from left to right with the same energy that we did for the other animation. Not only that, it also morphs into different shapes as well. However, the idea is similar to what we did before. We just make sure all these shapes are morphing between each other as well as animating so that they can interact with each other. Now we have four different layers in our composition. Let's go back to the outside layer and see what our animation looks like now. So you can see the rotation really gave the whole animation some life. The next thing I need to do is to add the gradient stroke on my first two layer that doesn't have the stroke yet. Let's go back to the main composition. Let's play the whole animation. Now you can see we have a beautiful Mandela animation. We just need to add some glow to this animation and then we're done. To add the glow, let's go to the layer and then new adjustment layer. Let's go to the effects and presets. The glow effect that I'm using is the paid plugin called Deep Glow. Let's add in the Deep Glow. You can use the After Effects default glow, but I found Deep Glow is working much better in most cases. So that's why we're sticking with Deep Glow. After I drop it in, you can see it's already looking really nice. After the deep glow effects, we can add in another one that's called echo. And then let's bring the echo on top of the deep glow. Let's make sure we change the echo time to negative 0.002. And then we can change the copy to eight copies. Maybe that's too much. Let's try to make the decay to 0.5. Let's change it to six copies. Oh, we need to make sure we change the echo operator to maximum. Now here's the final animation. That's it with this tutorial. Hope you like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, please leave me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. We will be publishing more After Effects tutorials like this every single week. In addition, we also have a free exclusive community where motion designers hang out and learn from each other. Click the link in the description to join our exclusive community. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.